Welcome to this video on adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Now, we know that denominators are the bottom numbers of fractions, and denominators name the unit. So they tell you uh, what the name of each unit is. If the denominator is 5, you're dealing with fifths. If the denominator is 7, you're dealing with sevenths. One thing that we have to really focus on when we are adding and subtracting any numbers, and we know fractions are numbers, is that to add or subtract any numbers, you must have the same units or denominations. One more time. To add or subtract any numbers, you must have the same units or denominations. For example, if I have two cats, and I try to say I'm going to add them with two dogs. I cannot say that I have 2 plus 2, which is 4. I can't say I have 4 cats, or I can't say I have 4 dogs. If I then change how I'm naming each animal, and I say I have uh, 2 animals, because cats are animals and dogs are animals, now I can add them together because they have the same unit. The same unit is animals. So I know that my answer will be what unit? Animals. Now I can add the numbers. 2 plus 2, 4. For what? For animals. I can't do that here because the units cats and dogs are different. So one more time, to add or subtract any numbers, you must have the same units. In other words, denominations. Looking at denominations, the part of a fraction that sounds like and looks like denominations are denominators. So we have denominators. So we can only add or subtract numbers, and fractions are numbers, if they have the same units or the same denominators. Okay, let's see what's happening here. In this problem, we are asked to add, we're asked to add, two-thirds and one-fifth. Well, what operation are we doing? We're adding. So, we need to make sure that we have the same units, or denominations, or denominators. In this case, two-thirds, we're dealing with thirds. In this fraction, this number, we're dealing with fifths. They are not the same denomination or denominators. So, we cannot begin to add until we make them the same denominators. How we're going to do this is very visual. And when you see what we're going to do, this will all make sense to you. All right? So, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw a visual model for what two-thirds looks like. One thing that is very helpful in math and is being uh, pushed for in the Common Core standards is that we model with mathematics, that we make models of what we're thinking about. And the pictures will enable us to really understand what's going on. So I'm going to partition this hole right here into three equal pieces because that's what the denominator tells us. It tells us how many equal pieces to partition the hole into. All right, so I'm going to partition into three equal pieces. And I'm going to shade in two of those pieces. That's what the numerator tells us. It tells us the amount of thirds that we're actually going to be taking. Okay, shade it in two thirds. Now, what I'm going to do is partition this hole by looking at one fifth into five equal pieces. But there's one thing I'm going to do. I'm not going to partition vertically. That means up and down. I'm going to partition for the second fraction horizontally. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Partition this into five equal pieces. This hole into five equal pieces. And I'm going to take one of them, 
shade in one of them. This will represent one of the five equal pieces. Okay, now basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what is, what is in this picture right below in this bottom picture as well. So let me do that. I'm adding these. I'm partitioning this into five equal pieces. I'm basically just recreating what I did above. And let me just make this accurate so it looks like five equal pieces and not sand. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make this as precise as possible and as neat as possible. Okay. And I'm going to shade in two thirds here. And I'm going to shade in one fifth here. All right. Now I'm looking at thirds. Is is there anything that I can do to these three equal pieces to make them five equal pieces? Remember, I can't get rid of anything, uh, and I can't add on to anything. Is there something that I can do through partitioning? No. All right, there is nothing I can do to thirds to make them fifths. Is there anything I can do to fifths to make them uh, thirds? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to now go to each third and partition the third into five equal pieces. Basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm overlaying these lines. These, so I'm, I'm going to put all of these fifths. I'm going to take these lines that are making fifths and overlay them over here. All right? So I'm just taking those lines and partitioning each third, each third right here, each third and each third into five equal pieces. Did I partition each third into five equal pieces? Yes. Okay. And now I'm going to take these vertical lines and overlay them on this diagram right here. So I'm going to partition each fifth. A fifth, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth, and a fifth into three equal parts. So basically all we're doing is taking the horizontal lines in this diagram, overlaying them on top of the vertical lines in this diagram, and then taking the same vertical lines, the up and down lines, that we have in the first fraction, and overlaying them in the diagram uh, in the second fraction as well. If you look, how many equal pieces does it take to make a whole now? So I have one, two, three, times one, two, three, four, five. So three times five is 15 equal pieces. So there are 15 equal parts here. So each of these now is 15 ths. This is a 15th, that's a 15th, and there are 15 15 ths. Now over here, how many equal parts do I have uh, in the whole now? One, two, three times one, two, three, four, five. Fifteen equal pieces as well. So now I have fifteenths. Each of these is the same size, the same denominator, the same unit. Fifteenths. How many fifteenths do I have shaded in? Two times one, two, three, four, five. I have ten fifteenths shaded in. And how many fifteenths are shaded in over here? One, two, three. So I have three fifteenths. Now, I'm trying to add. Can I add? Do I have the same denominator, the same unit, the same denomination? Fifteenth, fifteenth? Yes, I can 
add. Now, before I continue to add, I want us to see how we actually got fifteenths, ten fifteenths, and three fifteenths. Okay. If I go back to the original problem here, two thirds. I remember I was trying to get the same denominations. What did I do to three to get to fifteen? I multiplied three times five to get fifteen. Let me show that right here. So if I multiply three times five to get fifteen, what did I multiply two by to get ten? I multiplied two by five as well. But where did I get this five from? How did I figure it out to multiply? I looked at the denominator in the other fraction. And that told me what number to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by. That's how I got 10 fifteenths. 2 times 5, 10. And 3 times 5, 15. 10 fifteenths. Looking at here, using that same reasoning, can you figure out what I multiplied 1 by to get to 3? What did I multiply 1 times 3? What did I multiply 1 times to get 3? I multiplied it by 3. And what did I multiply 5 by to get to 15? I multiplied it by 3. I got this 3 from the denominator in the other fraction. So, generally speaking, if the two fractions have different denominators, we look at the number in the other denominator for the other fraction. So looking at 2 thirds, there's nothing I can do to, to 3 to make it 5. So I look at 5 and I multiply both the denominator and the numerator by 5. Therefore now I have 15 ths. I'm looking at 1 fifth. I multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3. Now I have 15 ths over here. This helps me to create fractions that have the same units. Now when you multiply a numerator and denominator by the same number, you're creating equivalent fractions. So we're not changing the value of these, of these numbers. Notice how the amount of shading has not changed. How the number looks though, how it's written, the notation of it, has changed. So 2 thirds is equivalent to 10 fifteenths, and 1 fifth is equivalent to 3 fifteenths. Now I can add my fifteenths. So I'm adding, do I have the same noun, same unit, same uh, denomination, same denominator? Yes, fifteenths. So my answer will be fifteenths. Now all I'm adding is 10 plus 3 of these things we call fifteenths. What's 10 plus 3? 13. 13 what? Fifteenths. And that is how we create uh, denominators, how we create fractions that have the same denominators, and how we add fractions when they do not have the same denominators. So just to recap, we, if we're adding, we check to see if we have the same denominators. If we do not have them, we will multiply the denominator and numerator by the other fraction's denominator. We do the same thing to the other fraction, looking at the other denominator, and multiply the numerator and denominator by the other fraction's denominator. Now we've created common units, common denominations. Now we can add or subtract. And then we add and subtract as normal. Remember the bottom number just names the unit, so we have fifteenths, and the top number actually does the adding or subtracting. Okay? So that is how you add fractions and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. If this, was, um, if this were a minus sign, what I would simply do is um, I would say, okay, I have 10 fifteenths, I need to subtract 3 fifteenths. So I would still be dealing with fifteenths, but this would be 10 minus 3, which is 7. And then I have 7 fifteenths. So you operate the same way and the same thinking. Uh, subtraction will be, in this case, uh, taking away.